Hi, I'm Eric. I'm here with Kieran Patel from Intelliprop at SP21. Kieran's going to walk me through a demo that they have going through multiple booths and show me what they're, uh, they're working on. Yep, certainly. So, what we have here is a Sapphire Rapids uh, development kit from Intel. Uh, Intelliprop has put in a um, CXL to Intelliprop Fabric 2 inside. We've got uh, optical cables running out the back side. These are 30 meters long. And what we're trying to show here is that this server can access numbers that's over at least 30 meters away. So that's what we've got going on in this case. Um, we've got a fabric manager that can be run on this server. Um, if you want to, let's see. So I'm going to speak a little louder here because it's uh, a little bit loud with the fans, but the optical cables are coming back in. Um, in this other booth, and they're coming into what we call the gen, uh, the switch, the Intelliprop switch. Uh, from here, it's going to fan out to a few different media boxes, other servers, as well as the fabric manager. So here, what what uh, what topology is this network? With this That's a really good question. Let's move over to the screen here. Uh, what we have here is the topology that we're showing. Uh, we've got our uh, TXL host nodes, which um, which were for the Sapphire Rapids. We've got the Gen Z switch, which we just showed you in the last uh, frame. We've got a fabric manager, as well as an ARM processor that's directly connected to the, to the fabric. So again, all back here, all these black lines represent the Intel Plus fabric. It looks like you have multiple uh, lines. Yep. The so what, is that for multi-passing? That is multi-passing. Yes, okay. exactly. Good question. So that is multi-passing. You've got multiple ways to get to all of the purple which is what we call our memory module. Uh, in each media box, there will be a set of switches as well as the memory module. Each memory module has a switch as well, which can then connect to its neighbor. Uh, this allows for full multi-tapping across every uh, memory module, allows for redundancy and access. In fact, what these red lines show is when we took a snapshot of this picture, the red lines indicated an existing connection that got removed. So it turns red. When those connections are put back, they'll turn black. Okay, so the fabric manager that's running on that that orange node there is able to detect the changes in the link? Or how, how does that work? Absolutely. That's exactly what his job is. He's, his job is to discover the entire network, what devices are available, and then be able to create routing tables and such so that we can get from the CXL host nodes or even the SOC all the way to the VMS. Does it manage the, uh, the sharing of those memories as well? Absolutely. It manages the sharing. It takes requests. It can allocate. It can allocate. If this were a 256 gigabyte uh, of VRAM, it can sub partition that into multiple partitions and share it across all four hosts. It also has built in security where it can zone off or create uh, walls where host two's memory cannot be accessed by all the other hosts. It can also allow sharing of that uh, data as well. Okay. You can do a read-write or a read-only. Uh, but that, that is the full topology that we're showing here. Again, Intelliprop fabric starts from the CXL host node all the way to the uh, memory module. And when again, with multitasking, this is stuff that uh, other protocols are not able to do today. And so where's that SOC node? Can you show me where that, that's uh, hooked up? Yeah, so the SOC node, again, is an ARM processor directly connected into the uh, fabric. Here we are back at the Intelprop booth. Again, you can see fiber optics coming in to our server rack here. Um, we've got the SOC, which I was showing you uh, where that was. And we've also got a fabric manager here. And we've got two media boxes. Both of these media boxes, again, have a switch built inside where these cables are coming in. And then each uh, memory module has its own built-in switch as well. So within this box, you're going to see a lot of cabling going around that has a memory module connected to another mem memory module as well as to the switch. And that's that's our topology in, in a nutshell, but we're also going to show you what happens live when a cable is pulled out or pushed back in. So what we have here is our fabric manager running uh, with a crawl-out software, which we'll show you in another video. Um, but this is the fabric that the fabric manager has detected, the NZMMs as well as the internal switches. And what we're showing here is all the connections that the fabric manager was able to find. Now what my colleague is, uh, is going to do here, Jim, is going to unplug a cable 
and we're going to see that cable turn red because the fabric manager notices that it's been removed. So as you can see, the fabric manager had noticed there was a connection between switch one and switch zero, and now it has noticed that the connection is no longer there and it turns it red. And now Jim is going to plug that cable back in and the fabric manager is going to notice that it now has a route point through that, through those switches, and as you can see, it turns green. So here, and since there's a, an alternative path to that ZMM0, uh, will traffic be rerouted um, between uh, switch two and switch one? Absolutely. So when the cable is unplugged, as it is now, it would have gone from switch three to switch one to, to the memory zero. And when the cable is plugged back in, it would go from zero one to ZMM. Okay, so it's a, sh a shortest path uh, algorithm. Shortest path algorithm, yes. Okay. But it will find the right path to take to. And again, this is with multi-passing. What, what we are showing here is a little bit of the two ZMMs at the end do not have multi-passing. Again, that is part of the next video and, and a new consideration. Well, thanks for showing me that demo. That was really cool. Um, so what's the state of the technology? What are you showing over there? Is it uh, in ASIC or, or what sort of uh, uh, silicon are you running? That's a good question. What we're showing right now is uh, full functionality, multi-pathing um, with the memory modules and the ability to share that memory. I mean, the really cool thing is we, show, we showed a lot of this about a couple of years ago at the last SC that was live. But uh, this year what's really, really exciting and really, really cool is the fact that we've got a fabric manager. So we've worked a lot, um, you know, both uh, Intelprop as well as some of the other consortiums have worked well with uh, OFA. Uh, we've created sort of a software stack built, built on uh, Redfish. So I saw that there was a connection over to the Open Standards Pavilion. What, what was that doing? So you had the Open Standards Pavilion connecting to our fabric manager. Yep. Um, so they also have access uh, with their servers into our network. Um, and they, they're able to get uh, some of that shared pool of memory as well. So, okay. uh, again, this, uh, we, what we want to show here uh, really is that uh, you know, we're obviously showing memory sharing, memory pooling, but this can be expanded into other areas as well, storage, uh, accelerators, etc. cetera. Uh, today, all of the equipment we're running is based on FPGAs. Uh, okay. and so the latency is not quite where it's going to be, but uh, you know, in the future when we do get to ASICs, this latency should be uh, about a quarter of where we are today. Okay, so what we're at now, um, you think it can be uh, four times faster? Yes, four times faster. Okay. Absolutely. So it looked like you had about uh, 48 nodes in the topology that you're showing here. Uh, what's the total number of uh, nodes that you can run in this fabric? What's the limit? Yeah, that's a good question, um, and, and you're correct. That is how many uh, nodes we are showcasing here. Um, but each well, each subnet can hold about 4096, and then we've got about 64,000 subnets, and it gives us an aggregate of close to 250 million uh, devices. Okay. Okay, so so not not gonna run out of uh, uh, address space uh, anytime soon. Uh, no, not at all. Not okay. at all. So. And is is there a limit to the number of switches that can be placed in, in the fabric? I uh, not no. I think you can have as many switches as you want. Okay, so the switches uh, with multiple levels, it has to have really intelligent congestion management. Right. Uh, is that a feature that's supported? That is a feature that is supported by uh, the Intel proper. Yes. Okay. All right. So when you were over there showing me the topology. You showed me host nodes, switch nodes, and fabric attached memory nodes. Tell me a little bit about the fabric attached memory nodes. It looked like there was at least two interfaces connecting out to the switch. Yeah. What are those used Actually, for? Actually, there are four interfaces on those memory modules. Each one's 100 gig link. We've got it integrated in uh, switch. We've got the ability to do multi-pathing as well. Um, and then uh, each, you know, doing a bunch of reads writes, we can get about 17 gigabytes per second. And that's in that's in an FPGA as well. That is all in an FPGA today. We can also see about um, 800 nanoseconds round trip latency on a load to store through a single switch hop. Which? How, how do you expect that to change when this uh, these prototypes get converted into an ASIC? Uh, we expect that to 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 go down by three fourths. We're we're uh, aiming for a NUMA hop. So multi-socket server, uh, when one CPU is sharing the memory from the other CPU, uh, basically that type of latency, so sub-200 yep, sub exactly. nanoseconds. Sub-200 nanoseconds is our target when we get to an ASIC. When you get to large uh, switch topologies, things like congestion management, quality of service become really important. 
So is that supported in multipathing, being able to reroute based on congestion, or, or how does the congestion management uh, work through the fabric? Yeah, that's exactly supported. Our fabric manager understands where the congestion is. It is able to reroute as it needs to. Um, but yeah, it will definitely do that. So we're, we're trying to build into this fabric a great quality of service and the ability to manage congestion as well.